Hi everyone, it's Helen here from Bodywork Pilates. Today we're going to be doing a simple Pilates based stretch release session. Perfect for times when perhaps for whatever reason you've been less active or you've been sitting for longer. So ideal for things like holidays. So it's not going to be a tough session, it's not about getting ourselves all hot and sweaty. This is more about opening up tightnesses and alleviating some immobility. So we're going to take ourselves down to the floor. We're starting from our mat. So take yourself down onto the floor. Just be careful. And just take a moment to find your start position. So we want to be somewhere between having the back pressed heavily down, having the back overly arched, just within that that natural curve that you would have when you were standing. The back of the neck is long, the chin is naturally dropped, don't force anything. Shoulders are wide, feet and the knees are hip distance apart and you feel like you've got the weight resting evenly and securely through the back of the pelvis. Now from here, drop into the rib cage, lightly wrap that corset around and gently lift pelvic floor. So all of those three things are, we use in our Pilates principles if you're familiar with those, but just think about slightly tightening as if you were wearing a corset, keeping those ribs softened and breathing nice and wide into the ribcage so we don't disturb the stillness of the belly. Hands just rest on the floor at the side of the body and to gently open up, all we're gonna do is move into a backstroke. So we're gonna extend one leg forward, opposite arm back. Now again, keep the ribs down as you breathe out, just allow one arm to move back just to the side of the eye, it doesn't need to go all the way down to the floor. Opposite leg forward, breathe in to bring it back to centre and keeping that rib cage down. So don't overreach. The moment you start to pull too hard with the arm, you'll lift the rib. If you pull too heavily forward with the leg, you'll move the pelvis. So that pelvis should remain absolutely still. Those distances from ribs to hips, from breastbone to pubic bone, doesn't change. So we keep the natural curve to the low back, we maintain that light corset. And we're just looking here to softly change from one side to the other. So remember as always, our transitions are just as important as the movements. Keeping the pelvis level and still, if we were to place a bowl of water onto the belly, we wouldn't even create a ripple. Let's do that just two more times. So breathing out, reach it away. Breathing in, bring it back softly replace, breathe out, reach it away, breathe in, bring it back and pause there. I'm going to move your feet and your knees really close together. So whereas they were hit distance a moment ago, bring them together. So you've got your inner edge of the thighs, the knees and the shins together. You've got your ankle bones touching your bunions together. And then cross the arms over the chest. Shoulders stay relaxed, head and shoulders and chest stay at centre and you're just going to allow both knees to roll over to one side, moving from one side of the pelvis to the other, and then bring it back to centre. Now, as you do this, just check out what happens with my feet. I'm going to roll my knees over to my left, and you'll see my right leg stacks completely on top, so I haven't got one foot on the floor here. I've kept that connection through the inside edge of the leg, and then bring it back to centre. So allow the movement to move across the pelvis, creating a small, easy rotation out of those lower ribs. Upper ribs, chest, shoulders stay still. We keep that slight corset, keep those knees squeezing together, keep those ankle bones touching, the inner edge of the big toes touching. So it's like you've got one leg, or you've got both legs in one shoe. Moving with the breath, keeping the opposite shoulder down, upper ribs down. Just do a couple more of those. And one more. And then bring it back to center, release, and just bring those feet a little closer towards you. So from here, we're going to take a little stretch. You're going to bring your right foot or your ankle over your left knee, okay? Then you're going to press your lower back down into the floor. So a little tuck through with the pubic bone to slide your legs towards you. So you want your lower back 
just pressing into the floor, slide the legs towards you and then hug in. So you've got your left leg pushing the right leg towards you. Now, you could hold behind the legs, you could feed through if you wanted to, or, this is my preferred thing, you could take your um, ankle off the knee, but slide it right across so you're squeezing inner thigh to inner thigh. And then slide the hands just along the mid shin, let the shoulders drop back and down, and allow that weight to be drawn in. So you'll feel that your right thigh slightly compressing on the right side of the abdomen. And what you're probably gonna feel now is a little stretch just through the outside of the glute. So deep into the glute and then slightly radiating out. This is a great stretch for when you've been sitting for too long. Your back may well still be flat here, that's absolutely fine. But this just helps to ease out that internal tightness of the glutes. Little muscle in there called piriformis. Keep those shoulders relaxed, maintain the softness of the neck. Okay, now keep the right leg towards you, put the left leg back down, so we unload the back as carefully as we load weight into it, and then we release the right leg. Okay, have a little shake, and then change sides. So you're gonna take your left ankle over your right knee, okay, ankle's still mobile. You're gonna press your lower back down into the floor in order to slide those legs towards you, and then keeping the weight pressing down, you're gonna pull it in. Now for some of you, that's gonna be enough, that's gonna feel like it's a really good stretch, and it is a really good stretch. I just prefer to slide my thigh to my thigh, place my hands along the shins, not onto my feet, and then let the weight of the upper body drop back and just bring that left thigh in towards the left, left side of the body. And again, you should feel that that's a pretty, pretty intense stretch. If you don't feel it terribly intensely, don't worry about it, you're probably just not tight in that area, but it's still a nice stretch. And again, the back will be flattened, so there's no need to put weight into the back. Your back's well supported into the mat. Okay, keeping hold of the left leg, so we offload the weight from the back carefully. We put the right leg down first, we put the left leg down first, uh, second, and then we just return to where we came from. So our feet are hip distance apart, shoulders are relaxed, Arms just rest on the floor at the side of the body, and we've returned the spine to that natural curve. So once again, we're level through the front edge of the body. And from here, we're moving into shoulder bridge. So tighten up a little through the inner thighs, draw up into pelvic floor, and then as you breathe out, without pushing backwards, so we don't want to push backwards, we want to tip that bowl of water over the chest. So imprint that low back to the floor, let the pubic bone rise, then start to press down into the feet, and continue to roll up to the base of the shoulder blades. So take care at this point not to go too high into the ribs and the breastbone. Drop that down, keep that sensation of trying to curl up from the tail so you elongate and then really reach out through the front of the knees. The backs of your thighs and your bum should be really firm here. Feet are pressing evenly down. Take a breath in as you breathe out, melt down again, relax those shoulders, run down into every vertebra. Release the spine at the end of the movement, just for that easy curve. Don't need to dive too heavily forward, and then do it again. So as you breathe out, tip your bowl of water over the chest. Don't put any real weight into the feet at this point because you don't want to drive backwards. Just try to shorten that front edge of the body. And then only press down as you continue to tip your bowl of water. So again, we're not pushing back. You shouldn't really feel or hear any movement of the hair behind us. Reach out through the front edge of the knees, keep that pelvis tilting up, lengthen out as you breathe out, roll it all the way back down again. We're gonna do this another three or four times. Trying to get into those little sticky bits of the spine. So remember, we're wheeling the spine through, trying not to create any corners, and again. So as you breathe out, tip, then press, continue to roll, just to the base of the shoulder blades, there's no flattening at the back of the neck. Bum should be nice and tight. These glutes should be working quite hard. Take a breath in as you breathe out, melt it all the way back down. Relax those shoulders. Release the spine at the end of the movement and do that two more times. So as you do this, make sure you keep an even placement through the feet. So the ball of the big toe, the ball of the little toe and the center of the heel. 
lengthen the back of the neck, little pressure down, and then roll it all the way back down. And you're trying to get that feeling that it's almost like you're trying to pull your feet towards you on the way up and on the way down to fire up into those hamstrings and again to stop yourself from being pushed backwards. One more time, so imprint that low back, press firmly down, don't drive backwards, just roll along the spine, face the shoulder blades, reach out through the front of the knees, take a breath, breath in, and as you breathe out, melt it all the way back down. Relax those shoulders, release the spine at the end of the movement, and then give the spine a moment by taking the feet as wide as your mat, dropping your knees together, and just let your hips and your spine relax for a moment. Notice if that feels any different. Maybe you experience the difference from the first repetition to the last. A little bit more freedom, a little bit more movement. Okay. Take the arms wide, keep the knees dropping inwards so your knees are inwards like a little teepee. They won't stay together at this point. You're gonna let your knees roll over to one side, let your head roll over to the other. Bring it back to center and then rotate. Don't try and force anything. Just keep it smoothly running through. Nice and soft from side to side, unwinding some tightness and stiffness, some tensions from that back. And then you're going to roll it all the way over to one side, turn yourself around, bring yourself around onto your hands and knees. Okay. So with the hands below the shoulders and the knees below the hips, Spread out the palms, so you've got the whole of the hand connecting, including the instep of the thumb and the first finger. Shoulders are wide and drawn away from the ears, the crown of the head forward and the tail away, and you want this same soft curve of the low back that you would have ordinarily. Lightly engage those abdominals, think about that wrapping corset. Now place an imaginary line right down the very centre of your mat. We're going to avoid moving from side to side of that line, and we're going to go into our table. On the outward breath, keeping that balance, keeping that centred line, you're going to slide away with the arm on the opposite leg and then just gently float up. And then bring it back down, touch back, bring it in, change sides. So slide away, arm on the opposite leg, float, touch down, back in. Now again, less is very often more. So don't try and overreach because that does horrible things to the position of your hip, the position of the pelvis. So keeping everything very level, very still, float. You're just looking to get the leg about parallel, if that. You're looking to get to the arm, to around about the side of the eye. It's all you need. And every time you come back, make sure you put the knee below the hip and the hand below the shoulder. Otherwise you'll find yourself in trouble when you run out of space. So reaching away, floating, a little squeeze of that glute, a little work into the back of the shoulder. Remember, we're just looking to mobilize to open out, so we're not looking to overreach, overdo anything. Don't try and over egg your custard. Let's do that two more times. Still holding that balance, bring it all the way back and just take the weight off the wrists, give the wrists a little bit of a, sh of a stretch out. Bring yourself all the way down to line your tummy. So from here, you're going to put one hand on top of the other, and then the forehead down onto the hands. Just take my glasses off. That maintains the length in the back of the neck, so you don't feel like you're dropping your head heavily down. Think about the position your head would be in if you were standing. It's the same sort of thing. It's trying to recreate those same curves. And now think about the position of the low back. So for some of you, lying on your tummy will create a tension, a dropping, a compression of the low back, just because that's the way you may. So if you can think of putting some weight down into the pubic bone and to the hip creases either side of the pubic bone, of sending the tail, uh, tailbone under and the sacrum away, 
engaging those abdominals, you'll see if I just drop my back again. So if I, I don't have a hugely curved spine, so it's quite subtle, but if you see my lower back here is quite, quite curved, it's just, that's just my curve. If I just elongate and decompress my back slightly by pressing onto the pubic bone, by pressing into my hip creases, by sending my sacrum away, that little traveline shaped bone that sits between my buttocks, that sends that away, you'll notice that my back hasn't flattened, but it has slightly elongated. It also has naturally engaged my abdominals. So I'm gonna keep that as I now float my right leg and then lower. So I'm breathing out to float the left leg, breathing in to lower. I'm looking to keep this length, this space, and all I'm doing is working into my glutes and opening up at my hip flexors. So shoulders are drawn down, no effort at all in the upper body. And I'm looking to lift from the front of my thigh. It's possible you might not see that too much because of my, my trousers, but I'm just lifting from the front of my thigh. I'm certainly not moving my weight from side to side. So my hip bones continue to just rest to the mat. There's no twisting, there's no rotation on this at all. It's the same, it's the same sort of movement when you walk, as you step forward and the back leg is behind you. It's that sort of thing. It's that slight elongation of the leg being behind you. That's all it is. So squeezing slightly to raise and then lowering. Hips stay nice and still. Again, the shoulders are relaxed. But you need to get a little tight in the shoulders as you do this. Abdominals continue to draw in. If at any time you feel compression beginning to build up in your back, stop, reposition yourself, and then continue. We'll just do that a couple more times on each side. Nice and smooth. Breathing out to the lift, breathing into lower, and then release. Just let those legs have a little shake, maybe just rock the hips touch. And then bring your hands just wide of your shoulders, slightly forward of your shoulders. Elbows drop in, shoulders down, back of the neck stays long. We're going to keep the legs down this time, but the same principles apply for the low back and the position of the pelvis. So elongate that low back by pressing onto the pubic bone, onto the hip creases. Lightly engage those abdominals. Put little or no pressure into your hands as you breathe out. You're going to slide your breastbone forward and just lift from behind the breastbone. So those lower ribs stay down. And we're only working from directly behind the breastbone, right between the shoulder blades. Maintain the length in the back of the neck and then lower back down. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that this lower back doesn't feel like it starts to crease and, and tighten up. This is all about working in the thoracic area of the spine. So maintain the length in the back of the neck. As you breathe out, slide the breastbone forward. Just move from behind the breastbone. Keep that length lower back and then breathe in as you lower. So I would like to keep the lower ribs down as you do this with little or no pressure into the arms. If you think you are pushing into the arms, then you can always just bring the hands onto the low back. That will also give you a measure as to whether you feel you're maintaining the length in the back of the neck as well, in the back of the low spine as well. And of course we do want to maintain length in the back of the neck too. So be aware that you don't lift and look forward to compress the neck. Your eye line simply travels just a few inches forward on your mat and then back down again. So press again front edge of the pelvis, keep those abdominals drawing in. Sometimes it's really tempting just to push out through your tummy. So keep those abdominals lightly corseted. Do two more. Sliding the back ribs down, shoulder blades glide down, just as if you're trying to just bring them to the back of the waist. One more time, opening up the front edge of the body and release. Slide the hands back underneath the forehead. Give your shoulders a little shrug. Maybe just rock your hips a little bit from side to side. And then bring yourself carefully up to the hands and the knees. Give your back a little bit of a stretch out. 
and then come take a seat. Okay. So any leg position other than cross-legged, and as always, you could do this sort of exercise sitting on a chair if you wanted to. I'm gonna go for a prayer position with the soles of my feet together. Fingertips come down onto the floor, and as I look forward, my fingertips are just in the bottom of my peripheral vision. So I can just see my fingertips just jingling around at the base of my vision. So just slightly forward. Up as tall as you can, roll the shoulders away from the ears, slightly retract the chin. No rotation in this at all. As you breathe in, lift the arm up, drop the shoulder down, and as you breathe out, really think about lengthening up through that side in order to come over. So we're not leaning into that hand. Bring it back to centre and release. Change sides, breathe in to lift, breathe out to elongate, keep the hips still, and then back down, and again. So lift, breathing in, as you breathe out, sliding, gliding over, bring it back to centre, breathe in, breathe out to release. So if you were to sit against a wall, you would have the back of your head, the back of your shoulders, the back of your ribs, the back of your pelvis, against the wall and you would just simply be gliding side to side on that wall. It's an elongation so again we're not putting any real weight into that supporting hand but we're really looking to open up out of the hip, out of the waist, through the underarm, all the way through to the fingertips. Make the next one the last one. Lifting up on the in-breath reaching side, bending on the out breath, returning on the in, releasing on the out. Give those shoulders a little shrug, make sure the knees relax, just give yourself a gentle turn. And then back to centre, and then a gentle turn. Back to centre, and relax. So, there you go, just a little bit of a stretch release open session, nothing aggressive, just enough to keep us mobile, moving, and if you've got any questions at all, just let me know, but enjoy, speak to you soon.